Today, the Department of Justice is announcing charges against two people who allegedly attempted to carry out uh, a deadly plot that was directed by factions of the Iranian government to assassinate a foreign ambassador here in the United States. That was yesterday, Eric Holder, the U.S. Attorney General. Look, Iran is a rogue state. It's a terrorist-sponsoring state. I'm not sure what the big surprise is. The surprise to me is that we're not actually doing anything about this. Joining me now is Robert Spencer, the director of Jihad Watch. Robert, how many times are we going to pretend that we're not at war and that we're going to have a, a few charges made against a few pawns on the chessboard and we'll maybe issue some more diplomatic statements? At what point, Robert, do we say we're at war with Iran and they are building a nuclear bomb and if we don't get you know, in there and surgically remove it through military action, they're going to whack us with, an inter with a ballistic missile or an atomic device? Well, Ezra, I couldn't agree more. That's on the horizon. But as long as Barack Obama remains president, uh, we're not going to take any significant action against Iran. Uh, I'm glad that they stopped this plot. I'm glad that they uncovered it. I'm glad that they moved against it. But the fact remains that probably this plot would never have been hatched in the first place if Obama had not been so warmly positive toward the Islamic Republic of Iran and hadn't made so many overtures to them that Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has been caught on tape laughing about how weak he is and how malleable he is and how he is going to hop to whatever the Iranian agenda is. And so uh, we can't blame them for figuring they could get away with this and pretty much anything else they wanted to. All right. Well, listen, you're being tough on Obama, and I agree with every single word you've said, but uh, the problem of Iran and nukes predates Obama. At, at, uh, going back to at least 2006, we knew what they were up to. George Bush was in power for at least two or three years when Iran was on the radar screen. And he did nothing either. And I am and I don't know if any of the Republican uh, candidates uh, for president would go so far as to say they would proactively attack Iran. Uh, is it is it just a partisan issue? I mean, Bush had his chance. He didn't do anything either, did he? No, you're quite right, Ezra. And uh, at Jihad Watch at the time, I hit Bush just as hard. This is a cluelessness that is in truly bipartisan. Uh, Bush had many opportunities when the uh, situation in Iran was not nearly as far as advanced as it is now. I don't think they would have tried this or could have tried this in 2005 or 2006. Now, why not? Why do you think they wouldn't? Course, why, w why don't you think Iran would have or could have tried to assassinate the Saudi ambassador? I mean, seriously, what, what would have stopped them back then? Well, in the in in those days, there was a whole lot more of a uh, assertiveness about American resistance. In those days, uh, for all his faults and for all the misguidedness of the uh, democracy projects in Iraq and Afghanistan, it was at least clear that uh, Bush was not going to stand for uh, uh, that for for jihad ex for an expansion of jihad activity, and was taking a posture toward Iran that was very different from Obama's. But at the same time, the, the fundamental weakness was that he did not move against the nuclear project when he could have and should have. And so the thing just started to grow. Iranian assertiveness started to grow as well as their nuclear program has developed. And now we have this monster that uh, could have been stopped at a much earlier stage. Well, let me ask you a question. I think I get it. But, I mean, Saudi Arabia is not a democracy. I mean, they're nominally a Western ally. But I think that's stretching the use of the word ally. W explain uh, for our viewers a little bit about why Iran would try and take a whack at Saudi Arabia, a fellow Muslim dictatorship. Well, this is a Sunni-Shiite problem. The Sunnis and the Shiites hate each other. They always have since the year 680, and they probably always will. And the Shiites are a small minority in terms of the global Islamic population, about 15 percent of Muslims worldwide. But the Shiite, 12 or Shiism is the official religion of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and Iran is being uh, much more audacious, really, than Shiites have been for centuries in trying to gain control of the entire Islamic world or leadership position, rather, in the entire Islamic world. They're funding Sunni uh, jihadis, Hamas in Israel and the Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, and they're di clearly trying to take a uh, leadership role that brings them right into direct competition with the Saudis as being the guardians of the two holy places in Islam, Mecca and Medina, and the kingdom of the two holy places, as it's called. They consider themselves to be the foremost exponents of Sunni Islam, and so they consider the Iranians, their chief rivals, and the Iranians, for the first time, are trying to be players on the stage of the Islamic world as a whole.
Hmm. Now, the West already has strict sanctions against Iran. We don't import their oil. We don't do other trade with them. But, you know, it doesn't really matter as long as China, India, even parts of Europe continue to buy Iranian oil. I mean, really, it's the oil, as long as the China, India, Japan, places like that are thirsty for oil, our Western sanctions mean nothing. If we continue on the course we are, that is, putting out meaningless press releases, walking out in a very showy manner of Ahmadinejad's speech at the UN, if we just continue on this path of, of diplomatic chitter-chatter, what do you think, where do you think the breaking point will come? When do you well, estimate eventually. Iran will, will do something truly uh, audacious, like, a, like an attack at a different country or even a nuclear attack? Well, I think a nuclear attack is on the horizon. I mean, they're developing a nuclear program. Ahmadinejad has stated many times that the Zionist regime has to be uh, taken off the map, and I don't think that he would hesitate. Remember also that Twelver Shiism, the official religion of Iran, it has this strange apocalyptic notion that the savior figure, the Mahdi, is going to come back at a time when the Muslims are undergoing terrible persecution, and that there have even been Iranian ayatollahs who've said that they can provoke that coming back of the Mahdi by provoking the persecution and by sustaining a few million casualties in a nuclear strike as a retaliation for their own nuclear strike. Hmm. So this is not a group that is susceptible to the idea of mutually assured destruction that kept the Soviets in check. These are really mad mullahs in the truest hmm. sense of the term. Hmm. Last question. About 30 years ago, Israel saw a nuclear reactor being built in Saddam Hussein's Iraq. They sent in F-16s and F-15s to bomb it. And I'm glad they did. Do you think Israel will move, if even America doesn't, to take out those nuclear reactors in Iran? Or do you think they're no longer even capable of doing that? I think they're capable of doing it. I certainly hope they do it. There have been rumblings in the uh, very high places in the United States about actually stopping them from Iraq. Anti-Israel people in Barack Obama's administration, like Samantha Power, has actually said that the United States should do that. Zbigniew Brzezinski, Carter's aide, who's also advised Obama, has also said that the uh, U.S. should do that. And I hope that that doesn't give the Israelis pause. It may be that they're our final hope in this. Robert Spencer, director of Jihad Watch, thanks so much for helping shed the light on these uh, dark times. Appreciate your being here. Thanks. Hey.